Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum today. Glad to have you with us. It is Thanksgiving week. Yes, it is. Hey, what are you thankful for today? I'm thankful for health. Amen. For feeling good today. That's what I'm thankful for. Praise what God. What about you? I am thankful for family and for friends. And when I say that, I'm especially thankful for our church friends and family. <laughs> And that sounds really selfish now that I said that no. I'm thankful that I feel good because you're you're thinking outwardly. Of course, oh, I'm no. thinking I'm no. thankful for I, I all of those things as well. I was thinking how good okay. your, yours were, and I was thinking about how I was going to really have to work hard <laughs> <laughs> to come up with. We all. But really, I was uh, we had a, a great weekend at, at church with mm -hmm. our church family, and you yes. know what a blessing it is to have people in your life who love God and, and love each other and are building people up. And yes. it's good to have health and it's encouraging. Kind of a yes. rough, Right lately, well, people you know, catching a little bit of this and that. We've talked to many friends over the weekend who have not been feeling so well, and some of our friends like you who watch us every day who have become really good friends, and we don't know you face to face, but we know your name, and many of you have not been feeling well. So we pray for you and pray for continued health and strength. I had in something your life. neat happen. I didn't even have a chance to tell you this before. What's that? We, uh, my son and I, were coming out of Lowe's over the weekend. And as we walked out, oh, oh, oh. Uh, a lady came up and said, hey, you know, you Pastor Franks and watch the shows? And I thought that was cool. Oh, so yeah. So you know, got to be, better be on your best behavior. Even with your mask you on? Did you have your mask She on? did. She said, you know, I even recognized yeah. you behind your mask. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We have been multiple places in the city, and people will come up, and they recognize us, right? Uh -huh. And so it's just, you just never know. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, better do, be good. Right? <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about we're Thanksgiving. For that. Okay. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. The cost of Thanksgiving this year on the rise, too bad, because since 2015, it's been going down. But mm. this year, and bucking the trend, it's going up. And especially turkey prices um, are higher. We experienced that at the grocery store, went in. Bought our tur well. First of all, looked at some of the turkeys and we're like, "What?" Yes. I mean, some of them are like almost fifty dollars for a turkey. Well, I think that turkey that was fifty dollars was an organic turkey. Well, so like a turkey, it you was know, still a turkey. It's gonna be a little bit more. <laughs> things that are organic and better for you cost more. Okay. Okay. It was it fifty dollars. So we were a little bit of sticker shock over that one, so we found one that was a little bit smaller. Yes. It was still. What did you say? How I much think it was, was it? Almost thirty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not only though turkey is going up, uh, cranberry sauce. We though are I think going to be saved on that one. <laughs> you are so Ruth funny. has been making our own homemade cranberry sauce. Like it's a hard thing to do. It's well, not a hard thing. I don't know how to do Homemade it. cranberry is not hard to make. It sure is yummy. No, I was going to say that, but cranberry sauce is also rising and pie fillings. I've noticed pie that fillings. pumpkin seems to be up. Pumpkin is a little, is a little high. Uh huh. Yeah, pumpkin is a little high. Rough year. We use pumpkin all the time. Not yeah. only are the things we bake, but, you know, the pups need it. They, they do. do. One of and our pups <laughs> needs to have pumpkin. So they all adapted to the diet. So they all have pumpkin, pumpkin diet. in their life. Okay, so the average cost, now this is for, this is by the American Farm Bureau. So listen okay. to what they're saying. For a feast for 10 folks, that's maybe larger than your group. I don't know, whatever. Sweet potatoes, rolls, a vegetable tray, a pie with whipped cream. It's going to cost this year... Fifty-three dollars and thirty-one cents, and I would think that's it's, just the sides. See, I is don't that know just about the that. Side? See, Probably is because depending on your turkey size, it's, yeah, the price I was is going to be that different. That sounds a little low to me, but because it seems like to me to get out of Thanksgiving dinner, if you're under a hundred bucks for feeding ten folks, you're probably fortunate. I don't know. I think I'm sweet not sure. potatoes. I've never been talking about sweet potatoes. I've never been that great. My sweet potatoes are never that good. Your mother's were always mm, she didn't really, make a, a they were sweet so potato. good. And mine are like not. Cinnamon, I just, butter, come on now. And I tell myself, okay, it's just a little thing. I can conquer this. I say that a lot about my recipes. I'm like, I can do this. This is not overwhelming. Think about it. Just yeah. do it. It's yeah. just, I can do this. But sweet potatoes are hard for me anyway. All right, well, it's okay. Anyway, you can't you be good great, at everything. I mean, Ruth is pretty good at a lot of stuff. So if you can't beat sweet potatoes, it's all right. We'll eat mashed potatoes. Because <laughs> yeah, she can do some mean mashed potatoes not, over at our house. You must be hungry anyway. I actually am hungry right now. Okay, we're going to go to another one that has to do with supply chain problems. Okay. Are showing signs of relief in the future. That's good. 
There is hope that as we move into early portions of 2022, that it's going to get better. We're almost there. Yeah. We're almost at 2022. Some of the stores, uh, mm -hmm. some of the big chain stores, were able to get around some of the things because they uh, either ordered early, always good yes. to plan ahead. We talked and about some of that. the rest of them, not, not only did they order early, some of them booked their own ships. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, that was pretty smart. I was yeah. reading about that. They're like, yeah, I don't think we're going to wait on you guys. We're moving on wow. goodies along. So that's a positive. Sadly, we've had um, stories or news coming up of people um, robbing stores. Flash mobs. Flash mobs. Yeah. And you know what? I, I experienced that. Prior to the pandemic, we were, I, was at a, I, I was at one of the big stores here in town and saw this man. I'm walking out, and he's in front of me. Mm -hmm. and you know how you, there's an entrance to come in and an, and an exit? He was going out the entrance because it was oh, the gate, the little doors or whatever were open. Mm -hmm. He could barely walk because the box he had in his hand was almost bigger than he was. Oh, brother. And he's carrying this thing out the entrance. And the worker's standing there, and I'm like, I look at him because I'm walking out, and I tell the worker, because usually I'm like, can I see a receipt? He didn't sure. ask him anything. He walks out, and I'm like, what's going on? Because the alarm went off, and he says, he's stealing it, just like nothing. And I said, he's stealing it? And he's just, I said, are you going to do anything? And he goes, nope, we've been told we're not not to do anything. Wow. And and walked out. Well, that when the, we went up, he wasn't struggle. even rushing it was not like he was even rushing to get out of the store he's just walking because it was the tv was so big it was hard for him to carry alone and walked out and the guy in um that the cart guy outside told me there's nothing we can do about it because well, of course i'm following behind like he's stealing it and they're like don't, and they're like, leave don't him yeah just leave him well alone. san francisco area has had two flash mob events in the last few days first of all they hit a louis vuitton store and robbed it badly. I think that I think it was a hundred thousand dollars approximately. Which is how many nights. items? <laughs> yeah, because that's Vuitton, expensive. I don't know because that's a pretty expensive store. And then they went to a, another store. I think it was a Nordstrom's right outside of Oakland, mm -hmm. and hit that. And it was eighty people in there, and I think like twenty-five or so cars, roughly twenty-five cars, outside blocking the way so people cannot get there. And they they ran in there and stole all sorts of stuff. Now, and yeah, they had. I mean, they were prepared to do it. They had huge bags to carry things out in. In California, it's no longer a felony I, I, to steal if if the theft is of nine hundred and fifty dollars or, or lower. I guess yes. it is. Uh, so people are aiming for hitting property worth nine hundred forty nine bucks or less, so that they can stay out of trouble. I mean, a misdemeanor. I guess if it's a misdemeanor, it, the, person, the, the police will not respond. I mean, this is ridiculous. It is. This is ridiculous. And they're saying, well, we don't want to put people in prison, you know, jail. There's none of jail space. What? <laughs> I, we've just kind of lost control in America at so That's many places. Sad. There's another That's terrible event that occurred um, with a man running a... I think at this he, point, they, he plowed through a, a Christmas parade, right? Yeah, Christmas it. parade, killing five, wounding at least forty. Of course, those numbers could change as mm. as the investigation goes on. What a mess! That's and awful. This was in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Ran into a marching band, mm -hmm. mm. Uh, killed multiple people, and I think at least forty were injured. Mm -hmm. I mean, just tough stuff. You know, a lot of times, folks, you got to just really ask yourself. Well, you need to pray a hedge of protection about yourself. About your family, yes, you should be aware. Be alert. Mm -hmm. What? Be alert of your yeah, surroundings, what's that, going yeah. on around you, and not so much in your phone. We're, a lot mm. of people. I mean, I joke, but I've been walking and trip. You have to be careful. You have to put your phone away and be careful of your surroundings. That's right. Because people will run up and uh, you know try to steal your bag, steal Which your purse. Which happened this weekend? Steal. A mother was attacked, and her daughter. Mother was attacked, thrown, knocked down for her purse. Her little daughter, looks like she's about seven, came to her. She's like punching the guy before some other people that were in the parking lot came to help her too. So just be very aware. Yeah, especially as we're getting into the holiday season. Mm -hmm. you, you pay, pay attention. Well, there's uh, great things ahead. We've got a great interview. You mm -hmm. do not want to miss out on that. We will be back in just a minute.
Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. This Thanksgiving season, we want to share with you how grateful we are for each and every one of you. You know, I probably don't stop enough and say thank you. Thank you for watching the station. Thank mm -hmm. you for being a part of the ministries, letting them know. I was telling you earlier about uh, an opportunity we'd had to meet yes. a viewer, and she was talking about one of the ministries that they supported. And I thought, oh, that's wow. great, you know, and, and she was telling me about them. And, and uh, we rejoice. Let the people know that are on the air, whether they're local ministries, national ministries, how much you appreciate them. Pray for them. Because, you know, the work they do is not easy. It's work. It's sharing the word of God. Is, is, they're laboring to bring it to you. And we are certainly thankful for that. So many people are uh, being supportive of the station, and we are grateful for mm -hmm. all of you and what you do. Search the ministries online. Many of you call in and ask us for the contact information, but if you look them up online, you can easily find Lots them there, right there, as well as KAZQ. And we just want to say thank you so much again for being partners with us on this journey and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. You guys are amazing, and your faithfulness really does make a difference. You can always call into the station at 505 884-8355, extension 101, to speak to someone. Of course, you can mail in your donation or prayer request or any kind of um, thought you might have to us here at the station at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast, 87109. And of course, visit us on the website at kazq32.org. There are different levels of support. And of course, if you're making a yearly donation, you can do that as well. It's a tax deductible donation. We send out donation receipts in January, beginning of the year, so that come tax time, you have all of that information there readily available for you. Again, we just wanna say thank you so much and know that you are in our prayers and what a privilege it is to be in your home every day, having fellowship with you, sharing a good things with you about Jesus Christ. And not only that, but interviews that we do have and we share with you. So stay with us. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. We are privileged to have with us today Mr. Mike Derrick, who's also a pastor and, and a, a great friend of mine. Mike, glad to have you back. It's been a while, but we're glad to have you with us on Spectrum. Thank you, Pastor Brenton. We're looking forward today to talking about Christian education. Yes. And uh, before we get to that, though, I, I want to talk to you just a little bit about you and your background. You uh, have not always been involved in the education realm. You were involved in ministry. Tell us just a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I've been fortunate to have uh, two careers in my life. One as a missionary in Africa, and then uh, later here in Albuquerque, uh, working with Evangel Christian Academy and Christian Education. Uh, we spent 18 years in Africa. Most of that time was in Kenya, but we also uh, lived a few years in Southern Africa, in Lesotho and South Africa. Most of that time, I was teaching uh, pastors and church leaders. A lot of them only had like a fifth grade education, and so... You had to be very basic in uh, teaching them. Of course, I really felt I was called to teach, uh, teach the Word of God, which we did all those years. And uh, then finally, the Lord led us here to uh, Albuquerque and became a part of Evangel Christian Academy in the year 2000. So we've been a part of Evangel for several years, my wife and I both. I think my wife, it's been uh, 20, 21 years, something like that, wow. that she's been a part of Evangel. So we're very thrilled how God has led us and of course thankful for his mercies in our life. <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, your family has had a tremendous impact on many, many students, literally hundreds of students over the course of a couple of decades. And uh, now you function as the uh, leader, the uh, principal of Evangel Christian Academy. So let's talk a little bit about Christian education. Uh, I, I'm a personally a product of Christian education and actually a graduate of Evangel Christian Academy, class of 1986. <laughs> so that goes back a ways, but there's over, what, 40, this will be the 45th graduating class this year. Yes. So there's a bunch of uh, young people who come through the school. How much experience typically does an uh, academy teacher have here at Evangel? Uh, with our teachers, uh, of course, I have two that have 35 to 40 years experience, uh, wow. one of them being my wife who homeschooled our kids throughout our time in Africa. Uh, then I have two others that have been with us uh, 
between 12, 14 years as teaching. Uh, one of them has a master's degree in education. So, you know, our, our teachers are all highly qualified. Uh, we have one that's only been with us a few years, but she taught in other Christian schools as well, so she's got lots of experiences you teaching. Know, th that's a, a big <coughs> bonus anymore because we do hear of a lot of turnover uh, within, in the teaching field. You know, a lot of people are coming and going. It's sometimes not uh, a field that people have the longevity that they used to have. So to have teachers with experience is a, is a big deal. Is the school accredited? That's always a question that comes up as people are looking for a school. Yes, uh, Evangel has been uh, accredited for several years. We're with Axe Association of Christian Teachers in Schools. Uh, they're out of Florida, and there's, uh, I think I was counting seven or eight uh, different schools right here in New Mexico that are credited with ACTS at the moment. Because there are a lot of different accrediting uh, uh, organizations. Yes, there? there are. Yes, there okay. are several. Mm -hmm. So probably a couple of decades, roughly, that Evangel has been, uh, a Christian Academy has been accredited. And that's a big deal. It helps students uh, to have, when, when they get a diploma, not maybe quite as critical when you're in elementary school, but it's more important when you're in, in high school to be in an accredited facility. Um, you know, as people look at schools, they always are thinking about, well, what kind of activities are available for my kids? What kind of things does the school offer? We have uh, two different opportunities uh, in our school. One is in the area of sports and the other one in fine arts. In our sports program, we offer volleyball in the fall. And then the winter program is basketball for boys and girls. Um, we have a JV team this year and also it's just opening up. We're going clear down to first grade and having wow. a, a basketball with them. It's still in the planning stages. That should be rolling probably right after Christmas. And they'll be start having games and practice and so forth. <laughs> our, our basketball team, the last two years, the boys have taken the district championship. Wow, uh, the girls took the district championship last year in basketball and volleyball. Volleyball last year, they were undefeated, so we're very happy yeah. about that program. They work hard, not just uh, during the season, but all year round. Our basketball coach, uh, they, they you know, are conditioning all the time for basketball. In the area of fine arts, uh, our youth leader, uh, Cindy Rosado, helps us with fine arts. Um, they have a guitar and uh, a, a vocal uh, dancing, things. vocal, mm -hmm. singing, uh, human video. Uh, we had two students that made it to the national level this year. One was with her home church, and then the other one was here with the Evangel. Uh, and they both did very well on the national level, so we're very thrilled of that. And, of course, there's already a big group starting up this year, mm -hmm. uh, getting ready for a competition in March, and then hopefully on to the nationals, which will be in August. Well, you know, as people are looking around, what's one of the reasons that people look for Christian education? I mean, I know that it's changing. <coughs> Always yes. changing. Life is always changing. So when, when people come and say, hey, we would like to find out more, why are they usually looking for a Christian school? Uh, I think it's because of the Christian worldview. Mm. Uh, when you go into the secular schools, you know, see all kinds of things uh, taking place. And We're hearing a lot about uh, CRT and different things yes, like that. Yes, the BLM movement and so forth. And I think parents are beginning to see that's not what they want for their children, that they want them to have a good Christian education uh, you know, that good solid foundation under them. So they, you know, they're looking to Christian schools because, you know, we teach Bible every day. All of our curriculum is biblically based. We integrate Bible into every subject. And so it's giving a, a good solid foundation under our kids, you know, that they can be raised up to be mature uh, sons and daughters. They can go out into the real world and make an impact for Christ uh, in this generation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. You know, as you think about... Uh, Christian schools and private schools, the next question is always, well, can I afford it? Is it, is it competitive to be in a, uh, at, at Evangel Christian Academy? Do you have any types of things that help students in that regard as their parents are looking? Do you ever do scholarships? Tell us anything along that line. Uh, we're very competitive when it comes to tuition. We offer a number of scholarships. One of our main scholarships we've offered for years is the uh, uh, Connor Scholarship, which comes due in July. But we also have other scholarships, those who we call first responders. This can be doctors, nurses, uh, police officers, firemen, uh, EMTs. We all offer them a discount. And also, if there's a person who's in the ministry, a pastor, mm -hmm. uh, we offer them a discount as well. And if a parent or parents choose to 
pay their tuition all up front, which we had a number of them do that this year, uh, we offer a, a discount for that as well. So there's a number of Never scholarships options. available. Okay, yes. so the, the school started back in the, the 70s, 1976. Yes. Uh, so there's a long tradition of, of many young people being trained uh, through Evangel Christian Academy. One of the things I think would be interesting to know, is there a limited enrollment window? I mean, we're in, kind of in the middle of a school year, but you know, you're coming up on a new semester. Yes. So do you accept students in the second semester versus only in the fall? No, we will open up, uh, even right now, students are going to start coming in to get ready for uh, the spring semester. Uh, we have several openings in all of our classes. I'd really like to see some more middle schoolers because uh, mm -hmm. they go into high school and helps keep our high school strong. At a, a strong size. And also in grade school, uh, there's a couple of grades that we would like to see uh, more students in. So, But uh, I understand, you're, are you growing? Are you bigger than you were last year? Or how are things going? Yes, we're about 10 to 12 students more than we were uh, last year. So progress. Okay. So we made Thanks, some little progress, yes. Yeah. It's always good to see progress, right? You know, in, in all of our lives, we <laughs> praise the Lord for, for growth. Uh, as, as you think about this school and where you'd like to be for 2022, 2023, can you believe that? It almost sounds like we're talking about, you know, some space odyssey or something. Where would you like to see the school next fall? Well, I would like to see, you know, up to 100 students, maybe 110, 15. Uh, we are sort of limited on capacity at the moment, but we can handle up to 115 without any trouble. Uh, with the classrooms we have at the moment. And that's great. So that's our goal at this moment, and uh, we'd like to see that would help all of our programs in the school. Sure, just to continue yeah. seeing uh, a robust interaction there. You know, one of the things, Mike, that I think is so critical right now for parents is to understand that, you know, we're investing in our future as we invest in our children. And I was talking to another local pastor, and this was, a, was kind of sad. He was saying, you know, a lot of people are just don't, they don't understand, they don't seem to, to care about what really matters in terms of what you teach your kids is gonna matter. Uh, how they are maybe in church an hour or two a week, but you're gonna be in school 30 or 35 hours a week, depending on the situation. So it really matters. How can people get in touch with the school? Uh, they can contact us on our website, uh, ecanm.info, or they can contact us directly, uh, 883-4674. Uh, for more information about the school, we'd love to talk to you and give you a tour. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Mike Derrick from Evangel Christian Academy, sharing with us today. It's been great to have you with us. Thank you. On the 700 Club, reaching out to those in need, going to the far corners of the earth, making our world a better place to live, the pure joy of giving to others, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, clothing the poor, how Americans just like you are making an incredible difference around the world on the 700 Club. Since it is Thanksgiving week, we should talk about being thankful. Let's go to Psalm 16. It's a neat passage here uh, that talks about some unique things about thankfulness. Let's look at verses 5 and 6. Sure. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I don't know how far we can go, but we'll start at verse number six. Mm -hmm. My version says, you guard all that is mine. Mm -hmm. Yours says it how? The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. And right before that, it says okay. something about security. Right? You alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. There you go. My lot is secure. Think about the things that God has secured. What has God secured in your life this year? Has God secured maybe your marriage? God's blessed you and secured your marriage. Maybe you went through some turbulent times, but God secured that for you. Or maybe He secured your relationship with your children. He secured your job when you were worried that it might not exist anymore. God secured, we know, our salvation through Jesus Christ. I think so much of the time we forget about the things that God has taken care of and secured, locked down for us because he loves us. I think of um, those who suffered loss, so much loss in the past year, and the Lord says, it's okay, they're with me. So his peace Ooh, that's good. is something that secures me yes. and something that I can hold on to. 
Now, you also mentioned that that passage talks about the boundary lines have fallen to us. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. What does that mean to you, boundary, those boundary lines? That what God has given me or what he has guarded for me are good for me. Mm -hmm. It's for my well-being. The next verse is something that stuck out to me, which is verse 7. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. The Bible says that we should hide God's word in our heart. Yes. And at night, many times, I don't know about for you, but I, I believe for many of us at night, we struggle. Mm -hmm. Overnight, right? We're thinking about so in many the things. Hours. The night hours. We're thinking about so many things and our minds can go places. But if we will just remember the truths that we have hidden in our heart, even in those times, that will help us and guide us and lead us. That's really good. You know, the, the, and the fact that the psalmist points out that he, he, the Lord speaks to us in those night hours. You know, yes. often God says to us, it's okay or peace. Yes. Do not be afraid. You know, think about what Jesus said to the disciples. Lord, we're going to perish. We're mm -hmm. going to drown. And he, he says to the winds and the waves, peace, be still. What is the Lord speaking to you? Well, remember this. Give him thanks for his encouragement and the blessings he's already brought to you. And you'll never be disappointed. Thanks for being with us today.